Praise the Lord, everybody. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, let's stand to our feet and just give him a little praise here this morning. Can we clap our hands and magnify him for a moment? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. I woke up this morning and had a scripture on my heart and I couldn't shake it. I was sitting there and I was laying in the bed and I was remembering a story of Jesus was telling to Peter and he said there was a man that gave a great deal to two individuals, one 500 pieces of silver and one 50. And he said that neither one of them could pay it back, Brother David, but he said this, he said, I forgave it all. And he asked Peter, he said, to which one is going to show me the most love? Which one is going to be the most appreciative? And Peter said, the one that canceled the most. The one who had the most debt. He's the one that's going to be the most thankful. And they looked down at Mary who was at Jesus' feet. And he said, this woman right here. You see this woman right here? She's been washing my feet. She's been anointing me. She's been never ceasing to leave me since I've been in this house. And he said, I tell you that her sins are gone. They were many, but they're gone. They've been forgiven. She had shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little shows little love. And I begin to think this morning while I was laying in my bed. If I'm laying there, if I'm walking into this place and my worship is reflecting my forgiveness, what am I giving God? Can I walk into this place realizing what he's done for me and stand there and sit there? Or will my worship begin to show how thankful I truly am for all that he's done for me? I'm telling you here in this house this morning that I remember everything that he's done for me. I remember where I was. I remember the tears that I've shed. I remember the times that I was all alone. And I cannot enter into this place today without lifting my hands, lifting my voice, magnifying the King of Kings and thanking him for all that he's done for me in this place. So I want some people that is equally as thankful to begin to magnify the Lord that is in this place today. Praise him and thank him because he is worthy of our praise.
the Lord is in this place. I felt him in elements. I feel him in this place today. He is going to change someone in this place today. I feel it. There is healing in this place. There is freedom in this place. Everything is here today. If we can get in one accord and one mindset that we come here today for something. I don't know what it is, but he is willing and able to do exceedingly and above all that we can ask or think by the power that lives within us. There is power in this place today. Oh, I'm thankful to be here. The spirit is rich in this place today. We're going to go into giving right now. He has given us a lot, church. How much more should we give him freely? We got GiveLify, PayPal available at RiverbendPentecostal.com. You can send cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostal P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri 63869. We have text to give, 833-883-9311. This, this, uh, this prayer we do, it's just not something that we just do just to do it. But there is always a testimony behind it when we say it with faith and we believe that the things that we are saying are going to come to pass. So today, let's have faith that the Lord is willing to do anything that we can ask through this prayer. Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, Benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come and give, please.
through right now God's doing something in this moment he's stirring up something in the spirit right now and I want to say this he's still overwhelming you're hearing the song and you're feeling his presence but you're not believing it I'm saying he's still overwhelming he's the same God he's the same yesterday today and forever he has not changed the same God that parted the Red Seas is here the same God that opened the blinded eyes is here. He, he, no, He can still touch your family. He can still touch your family this morning. I wish somebody would... right now, why don't you just press through and give in?
Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you're worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. still overwhelm me and he's still doing great things I know it's been painful lately I know we've been going through stuff there's been a lot coming at us but he's still overwhelming he's still my Lord and my God he's still my firm foundation he's still my rock He's still the one I'm going to turn to. I, I can't turn to anything else. Peter said, where else shall I go? Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We're going to go through death sometimes in this life. We're going to go through some pain. We're going to go through some trials. We're going to go through some hurt. For whosoever will lose his life, or for whoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And prayer, God, begin to open my mind. Because so much the carnal mind gets focused on what we're losing. But the Spirit says, look what you're finding. the hurt, the death that's been coming, this is what you needed. God's doing a work in you now that, that you couldn't do until this stuff happened. And we're going to go into prayer this morning. Lately I've been praying. Normally I, I enter into his gates with thanksgiving, but I, I've been coming to him. Lord, I know I'm going to go through some stuff today. I, I know. But Lord, I need you and I need this. Lord, this is going to help me grow. This is going to help me reach others. It's going to bring forth fruit. Y yesterday in, in prayer, I was right here and I began to weep. I began to travail because pastors talked about it. If I perish, I perish. And so many times I want to say I believe that, but in my flesh I don't. And I began to tell the Lord, I need to go somewhere in the Spirit that no matter whatever comes my way, God, if I perish, I perish. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but it's you living in me. And this morning, I want to pray, Lord, whatever your will is for my life, I want to be molded into it. Because there's something, there, there's a place you can go in prayer in these seasons. You can't go anywhere else. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, there was an angel of the Lord that showed up that strengthened him. There's a strength in a prayer room that you can't find anywhere else. There's a strength that comes from his presence that you can't get anywhere else. And I believe the Lord's going to touch us this morning. I believe he's going to touch our minds. I believe in this season, this hurt that you've had. I believe that God's going to do something in the middle of it. I believe there's going to be life come forth from it. I believe you. If you believe that, will you just stretch your arms up to heaven? Lord, I still believe in you. I still believe in the power that's in the name of Jesus. I still believe that the name of Jesus changes lives. I believe it changes homes. I believe it changes communities. But more than anything, Lord, we want the real you. God, we got to get a real revelation of who you are. And sometimes through suffering, God, sometimes through the trials, that's when you reveal the most. God, you, you want to reveal yourself to us. God, and I pray that through everything that we go through, we get that revelation. But ultimately, Lord, I pray that we can submit ourselves to you. I pray that we can see in the Spirit. God, I pray that we can go to those heavenly places in Christ Jesus that takes us above our mess as our pastor preached. I believe, 
I believe in the Holy Ghost that we can walk in the above. We can operate in the above. I believe in miracle signs and wonders. But I believe you're going to do them, Lord, to create relationship, to change our community, to send this gospel forward. I believe in you, Jesus. And I believe in the people in this room. I believe you're tugging on hearts. I believe you're waking people up. I believe you're giving people dreams. I believe, Lord. I believe. And I come against all doubt. I come against every spirit of fear and anxiety and I bind it up in the name of Jesus and I cast it down. God, I lift you up.
Hallelujah to him now. You got it. You got it. You got it. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody praise him like you can. Nobody knows like you what he's done for you. not sure when we decided we had a choice in responding when he shows up. I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. He's done too much. Mainly he just let me stay until I was ready, until I was willing he kept his hand on me. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 through 28. Incredibly familiar, I'm sure, to all the Sunday school people in here. But grateful for all of our guests in the house. Good to see everyone here. Um, if you're able and would stand at the reading of the word. I know you've been standing a while. But uh, I'm going to let you. <laughs> you might be sitting a while, too. <laughs> My wife and my family tried to make me feel better Friday night, but I wasn't feeling too good. I, I took them at their word when they said, just preach all you want to. And, uh, uh, but thankful for everybody that came with us on Friday night. We had a move of God, and, uh, and our church was incredibly supportive and, and ministered to their congregation. And uh, um, I'm, I'm thankful that you're here today. We have several new faces and make sure that you do not get hung up visiting with your people and forget to address your new people so that's how we roll and at midnight everybody say midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself. supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. And that's the title of my message today. For we are all here. God is going to minister in this place today. He's going to minister specifically, intentionally. It's not generic, which means he's not just going to throw out the bucket on the congregation and you just get what you can get. But he's going to minister to you specifically, and you're going to know it. And you're going to know it because that's the way the Lord rolls. huh? That's the way he operates is he comes to seek and save that which was lost. Pray with me if you would. Lord, I love you. What a beautiful presence that is manifested in this house. Our praise team did a wonderful job. The worship was good. The response has been good. But we're going to preach a while, Lord. You laid this on my heart. You know as well as I do. This wasn't what I was going to preach. And you told me to go here to preach this. And I'm going to do the best of my ability. But this is your church, Lord, bought and paid for with your blood. I pray that I show that respect toward these people, and I pray you will anoint me to deliver this word as you intend for it to be delivered. Let us see it as you intend for us to see it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can finally be seated. Thank you. Early. 
I'll let y'all get settled. <laughs> Early in Acts chapter 16, we see that Paul travels and ministers according to the leading of the Spirit. He wants to minister in Asia, and the Holy Ghost says no. And he wants to minister in Bithynia, but the Bible says he was forbidden of the Spirit to do so. Then, when he doesn't know where to go, a vision came to Paul in the nighttime. In the vision, he saw a man from Macedonia. And he told Paul, come over into Macedonia and help us. He said, come over into Macedonia and help us. Somebody in Macedonia was hungry for God. God has a plan to do some work in some lives in Macedonia, and he's going to use Paul and Silas to bring it to pass. Their first convert after arriving in town was a lady named Lydia. The Bible says she worshiped God, and when she heard, I wish I could preach this, I will another day, and when she heard Paul and Silas minister, she said she already worshiped the Lord. She already had a concept of who he was. But when she heard Paul and Silas preach the word, the Bible says God opened up her heart and she attended to the things which were spoken by Paul. If you think you're going to just ride in here, honey, and catch a Shazam moment or a lightning bolt moment and just keep on traveling your merry way, you've got another thing coming. When you come to the Lord, it's going to cost you something, baby. You're going to have to bring an offering. You're going to have to bring a sacrifice. And you're going to have to bring a submitted spirit. Sometimes I don't know who we think we are. For such were some of you, he said. We were messed up. We were tore up. We were jacked up. Yes, Brother Derek, from the floor up. Amen. You didn't earn this. The Lord didn't pick you because you were the prettiest. He didn't pick you because you were the richest. He didn't pick you because you were the most talented. He picked you because he got a plan for you. He got a change to make in your life. And the... Mm, mm, mm. We think we got rights in the church. You ain't got no rights in the church. We're only here because God said we could be here. We don't have any rights. We don't have... Ooh, I feel something moving in this house. Man. Man. Next, after Lydia and her household are baptized, attending to the things which were spoken by Paul, we preach, you've got to do something to be saved. It's not works, it's obedience, Brother Jerry. In the likeness of his death, burial, and resurrection, Brother David. We don't do any work in that baptistry. The name of Jesus does the work in that baptistry. I knew it. Knock him out, John, is in the house today. Well, I'm going to have you shoot up in here amongst us because one of us has got to have some relief, and I ain't stopping. So y'all better just get with the program because God is going to have his way in the house today. Next, after Lydia, it seems like they are locked in a time of prayer. And on their way to prayer meeting, a young lady accosted them. She come out of nowhere, as it were, hollering at them. See, she was possessed by an evil spirit. The Bible said a spirit of divination. And she was used by her masters as fortune teller. And they made a lot of bank off of this little gal being able to tell people their business. The first psychic hotline was in Macedonia. The Bible said they saw much gain. 
I just want to tell you, this is a true story I'm telling you, but you're in it. There's some Paul and Silas's in this room, and there's some little young gals that have been taken advantage of in this room, and the Lord wants to see you delivered. I'm going to tell you something else. There's somebody in this room that you have considered taking your own life. Maybe in the past, maybe in the near past, but you've considered it. And I want you to know that the Lord was aware of it. And he sent me today to tell you, uh, don't worry, because we're all here. Yeah. You're going to know what that's going to mean. You're going to know what that's going to mean. But you've got to know that the hand of the Lord is on your life. Uh, you've got to know that the Lord is hearing you when you cry. He is hearing you when you pray. He is hearing you when you struggle. He is with you when you're fighting your battles. Uh, he is with you. Oh, hallelujah. Boy, I feel goosebumps on my goosebumps. You see, her mission, this young girl who's possessed of a devil, her mission was to get Paul and Silas off track, away from seeing the purpose of God fulfilled, and these hungry souls in Macedonia would get the help they need. The devil doesn't want that. Now, the way she was attempting to derail them was... To validate them. I said to validate them. To tell them as far as she was concerned, they're doing a good job. Here's what she would say, Acts 16 and 17. She would walk behind these men hollering and yelling, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. I don't know about you, but when I read that, I scratched my head because I'm kind of like, girl got it right. What's the deal? She's got it right. That's who they were. They were. They, oh, Lord and mercy. I'm glad ain't none of y'all preaching because this is going to be fun, what I'm feeling right here. She got it right. It was true what she said. But here's the problem with it. Paul and Silas weren't led by the flesh, neither were they looking for validation from the flesh. One of the things of deliverance that God wants to bring into this house is you stop looking for likes on Facebook and shares on Instagram to validate you and somebody looking at your cotton picking TikTok video. You don't need validation from people because it is fickle, it is weak, it is meaningless, and it's temporary. But the Lord has called you to a place where he will indeed stand over you and say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And baby, when you get validated by heaven, you don't need a handshake. You don't need a pat on the back. You don't need an attaboy from anybody because you know God is working through you. And I'm preaching that as just as much to me as anybody because I like it when you brag on me too much. But Brother Shannon, I'm on my way to deliverance because Brother David, we're coming into a world where the compliments are going to be few and far between and we're going to be misunderstood. But there is going to be no debating or no doubting when an army of believers rises up out of the gutter and rises up out of the flop house and rises up out of the crack house and rises up out of the white house. I said it. And rises up out of politics and rises up out of the doctor's office. Trust Brother Jerry, I don't get so many amens on some of this stuff. You think we're not going to have doctors and lawyers coming and saying I'm empty? Because you know by now your bank account being full don't mean your life is. Man, I'm all over the place today. <laughs> But I always knew I was going to be all over the place because the message is, for we are all here. If they would have kept listening to this young lady and allow her to continue her stuff, 
they would have started enjoying it. And then pride would rise up in them and they would start planning their route to prayer meeting to go by where she was so they could hear the good things they were doing. We want to know if we've done good, but we really need to start finding out God did good. We need to start declaring God did good. So understanding what was happening, Paul, I see your face right now. You're mad at me. I just saw your face. You're mad at me. Get over it. Tell the Lord, I, I, I'm sorry. I forgive him. And I don't ever even have to know you was mad except the Holy Ghost told me. The reason why you're mad is because you can't sleep at night for the power of the Holy Ghost ministering to you. You can't get it. You want to plug your ears. You want to cover up your eyes because the Holy Ghost won't leave you alone. I hope I ain't going to tap out this afternoon because it's going to be one to go out on. So understanding what was happening, Paul was grieved rather than proud. It didn't make him proud. It grieved his spirit because he wasn't led by the flesh, his own or anybody else's. He was led by the spirit. And he turns and he speaks to this young girl and he says, Ooh, I felt the Holy Ghost when I typed it. And he says, I command you to come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. And the evil spirit left her. Her manipulators were so proud of her being delivered. You see, they lost their meal ticket, so to speak. And now they're angry. And they take Paul and Silas to court and bring charges against them. You sure you want to be a part of this church? As they are being adjudicated, a mob begins to gather. I asked the men this morning and I'll ask you, how do you think a mob showed up? Because the manipulators went around and told everybody they could how wrong they'd been done. And they got a whole crowd, a whole gang to come up to where the preacher, you can't read that without laughing. Two preachers, Paul and Silas, and they bring a whole mob of the city to come out and holler and yell and call them names and say, yeah, they did it, I heard them. So the magistrates stripped their clothes off of them. Paul and Silas, now they're naked. And they beat them and then they threw them in jail. When they threw them in jail, they told the jailer, we're... We're charging you with keeping these fellas. And so he put them in the inner prison. And I read one place that said, inner may be the wrong word. It may have been the under prison, which means a hole in the ground underneath the regular prison. He fastens their feet in stocks, which is pieces of wood. They, they had a U-shape in the bottom and a U-shape in the top and you lift up the U-shape and you stick your legs in it and you put it down and you lock it. And sometimes they would spread their legs way out locked up in them things to hurt them more. So here's the picture. We came to Macedonia because the Lord gave us a dream and gave us a vision to help some folks. We didn't want to come to Macedonia. We wanted to go to Asia. We wanted to go to Bithynia. But God said, I got some folks that need you in Macedonia. Yeah. Out of the gate, we saw Lydia and her family saved. And we started praying for God's will to be done in this great revival in Macedonia. Then we cast the devil out of a young lady and set her free. And now... We've been stripped naked, beaten. We got thrown in jail first, and then we got transferred from that cell to the worst cell, our feet put in stocks, and now it's getting late, and it's almost midnight. That's exactly what I want to go through being in the will of God. 
right? Hmm? Holy Ghost is ministering right now. He's speaking to you right now. It ain't fair. It's not right. Here I have done everything that the Lord wanted me to do. I surrendered to him. I submitted to him. And here I am. And the Bible says, and at midnight, at midnight, can anybody connect right now when the Bible says at midnight? Because it's according to what kind of perspective you're in. Midnight is either the end or the... It's either the end or the beginning. And at midnight, naked, bloody, in her prison, Feet in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Come on now. And sang praises unto God. Now that tells me, Brother Ronnie, what they're praying about. Brother David, they're not praying gloom, despair, and agony on me. But their songs go with their prayer. Praises unto God. How is that? How is that? They prayed and sang praises in the middle of this mess. How do you do that? Think about it just a minute. We won't even worship if we don't like the song. Or worse yet, the singer. Woo! <laughs> Why they be letting that heathen get up there or not? I know what they did last week. They're in a mess. How do you pray and sing praises unto God in this mess? How do you not complain? and moan about the injustices that have been done to you? How do you go to church in the middle of a mess at midnight, no less? Well, here's Paul and Silas's thinking. Okay, the question that I don't need to ask is why am I in prison? The question I need to ask myself is why am I in Macedonia? I came to Macedonia because God let me see somebody that need me. God let me see somebody that I can help over there. Aha! We must be in prison. Hurry up, Connor. They're all watching you instead of me, man. I know you're good looking and skinny and all that stuff, but hurry up and sit down. Why are we in prison? Must be that somebody in here needs us. It's the only reason I'm in Macedonia. I came because there were some folks here that needed me. It must be that God brought me to prison because this is the only way I could get connected to the ones that need me. And better yet, not just the ones that need me, but the ones that want me. So, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises unto God. At midnight... Here's the way I see this happening in my mind. Is somebody, we got time. I'm going to give you like 30 seconds. And I know you're not going to need that much boldness. But here's how I saw that happening. Somebody who's living in midnight is going to feel right now. You know what? I don't have to wait till the closing. I don't have to wait till the conclusion. I don't have to wait till the invitation. But I believe I'm going to... Ah, I believe I'm going to stand up in the middle of my midnight. Yeah. 
And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! Do you really believe what I'm preaching? Do you really believe that God sent you to your mess because somebody there needs you? Somebody is locked up in prison there and God needs you to be there? But I don't want it like that. I don't like it like that. Well, welcome to revival, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the church that's built on the rock and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. You want to go to a country club, you came to the wrong place. That's down the road. And they'll have a buffet ready for you right shortly. But you're probably going to miss it. <laughs> Were Paul and Silas praying to get out of prison? It's hard to assume that when they accompanied their prayer with singing praises unto God. Now these prisoners, and there's no evidence that these prisoners were anything but the type of prisoner that normally went to the inner prison. It wasn't the best of the best. It was the worst of the worst. And at midnight, I got to say it one more time. I know it seems dark. I know you're tired. I know you're uncomfortable. I know that the struggle is real. It's not fake, it's real. Them was not fake stripes on their back, Brother David. Them was not fake stocks that they had their feet in. It's real. But at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. Now I'm just going to preach them a message. And the prisoners heard them. Why would the Bible say that? It doesn't mention it again. It doesn't say what they heard. It doesn't say that they were hollering, shut up, stupid, we're in jail. They didn't call the warden. The Bible just says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, this is the book, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. And the Bible says the foundation of the prison was shaken. Somebody's got to see this picture. As low as you are, as low as you have sunk, the Lord still has the ability to get down beneath you and start shaking things up a little bit. To, to break. I saw that picture. You see it? He got under the foundation, Brother Blake. They thought they had them boys as low as they could get them, but they didn't know that they served a God that had already been in the ground. He had already been in the dirt. He had already been in hell. And he began to shake that prison. And the Bible says immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Now look at this. Then the keeper of the prison was awakened and he ran to the prison and he saw all the doors standing open and he assumed the worst. He drew his sword and he would have killed himself, supposing that all the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, wait a minute, stop, cease, desist, no! No worries, partner. We all here. We are all here. The cry of the Spirit coming from this poor old goofy preacher is do thyself no harm. Yes. 
You don't need a pipe in your mouth. You don't need a needle in your arm. You don't need to be in bed with somebody you don't even know their name. You don't need a Budweiser in your lips. You do not need pills in your life. Well, I thought they were just talking about suicide. Let me tell you something, Brother Blake. I am the worst enemy that G.L. Keen has ever had. I have caused myself more problems than the whole world combined. And the word of the Spirit comes today and says, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. So who is we? Here we go, Brother Terrence. Here we go, men. I bet you ain't nobody ever preached this before. They probably have, but I like saying they ain't. Because I ain't never preached it before. And I know, Brother David, I have sometimes searched that Bible from Genesis to Revelation and didn't find nothing in there. Who is we? Paul said we are all here. This is when the Holy Ghost started talking, talking to him. You see, we were prisoners of pain and drugs and promiscuity and hopelessness and poverty. We weren't just looking to get out. But when the earth shook and the foundation of our cell, our prison was shaken, and the doors flew open and our bands were loosed. We no longer wanted to leave. Because everybody you know that's been to jail any length of time goes in there with a plan on day one. Not just get out, but I know exactly what I'm going to do when I get out. I know where I'm going to go eat. I know what I'm going to go partake of. I know who I'm going to go get with. Mm -hmm, Y'all heard me. And these prisoners were no different, Brother David. But something happened in the midnight hour when they heard Paul and Silas praying and singing. They found faith in something bigger right there than anything out there. Look at here, look at here. Fear not, you're not alone. Fear not, punishment isn't coming. You see, salvation has visited your prison today, not just to set you free, but for you to know why you've been set free. God heard your cry, and he sent us. Say, what do you know about jail? I've been to the baddest jail in the United States of America. I don't know if anybody else has ever been here and sat in the death chamber at Angola, but I did. I sat in the bunk of the last guy. Let me tell you something, Brother Cody. I didn't feel cool and I didn't like it. Because when they slammed that door shut, but I'm going to tell you something right now. It ain't the cells and it ain't the prisoners and it ain't the inmates of Algoa or, or Farmington or Charleston or any of that that I'm preaching about today. I'm preaching about the prison you've been living in in your mind and the prison that you've been living in in your home and the prison you've been living in in your heart. Everybody sitting next to you, I don't care who they are or what they think, everybody sitting next to you was locked up one day and an earthquake came and shook it. Don't let this suit fool you. Don't let this beef pants and this tie fool you. We are all here. We didn't leave. We didn't run. We didn't go nowhere else because it was right here that I found what I needed. It was right here that I was set free. It was right here when my faith went from what I wanted to do to what I needed to do. I believe the old timer said it like this. I know I've been changed. Come on, children. I know I've been changed. You know why I know I've been changed? Because the angels in heaven done 
sign my name. Does anybody know what it's like uh, to have your name took out of the devil's playbook uh, and written in the Lamb's book of life? Uh, I don't care where I was going. I don't care what I was doing. I found my place uh, and I'm going to stay right here uh, and cause when the new prisoner comes, uh, they're going to know there's hope. We're all here, the guilty, the shamed, the weak, the beleaguered, the broken, the bruised, and the battered. We are all here. Do thyself no harm. We're all here. Say, but I don't have any hope. Can I introduce you to about 25 people been where you're at? Say, I struggle with addiction. Let me introduce you to about 100 people who've been right where you're at. Come on, we got them with legal addiction and illegal addiction. We got them to do it with the rich folks and do it with the poor folks. But you should have been there when they prayed through. You should have been there when the sales started shaking. Come on, we got, oh, I'm going to cause trouble. We got people bound up by fornication and adultery. We got people been bound up by pornography before the internet ever came out. We got marriages that's hanging on by the skin of their teeth. But don't do yourself any harm, for we are all here. Right. See, Brother David, I'd like to be connected with Paul, and I'd like to be connected with Silas, and I hope someday I get to put my money where my mouth is, but I know about them prisoners. I know about them prisoners. I know what it's like to show up to church that's full of shame. I know what it's like to dodge the preacher because you're afraid he's about to read your mail. You're not by yourself, honey. You're not alone. Salvation has visited your prison today. We were brought here to connect with you. Do you know someday you're going to run into somebody who is your reason for living? Are you willing to go to prison to find them? You know what happened when prisoners heard them singing and praying? Faith was born in them. Because the Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Paul and Silas were beaten, they were imprisoned, and they were immobilized as much as they could be. But at midnight, today, the same God that heard those prisoners cries the same God that heard that jailer's cry, the same God that allowed Paul and Silas to go to prison to minister, that same God's here today. I prayed today, honest prayer, I prayed today, Lord, if you want to take, before it ever started, Brother Blake, before the service ever started, I prayed, Lord, this ain't about me. It's about you. And if you want to take over this service today, just have at it. If they want to shout, they want to dance, they want to, they want to uh, make it no need to preach, I'm cool with it. And I thought for a minute I was about to have to be mad at Brother Blake. Because <laughs> my spirit was willing, but my flesh was weak. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. It's really not. I meant it what I said. Would y'all stand with me if you're able? We're about to sing. Look at that picture. Look at that picture. Brother Walter, we're all here. We're all 
world here, Sister Crystal. See, we've experienced loss that could have destroyed us, but loss became the pathway to make us. Ain't that right? Huh? 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 I listened to it. I was. I listened to it today. I turned it on. I will send out an army and find you in the middle of the night. I turned it on this morning. Boy, I had to listen to it because sometimes, Brother Shannon, I need to be reminded why I'm here. I need to be reminded why I've overcome. I need to be reminded why I had to go through some things, Brother Jerry, because when they pull out their sword in hopelessness and despondency, I want to be able to cry with a loud voice, do thyself for we are all, we're all here. If you felt the Lord minister to you, the altar's open today. Respond, 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 sing. I won't be discouraged. I won't be discouraged. Even when, Even I'm, when discouraged. I'm discouraged. Come on, I know you want to pray. I know you want to turn it over to the Lord. I know you do. I won't be distracted even in the distraction. Listen, I will trust I the will one. trust the one who is greater than strong. Come on, the Lord's pulling at your heart. Don't Say be stubborn. Don't be prideful. Don't be fearful. Who is greater than just right where you're at, you shut your eyes and just begin to tell him to hurt me. I don't need another reason. Don't need another reason. I don't need more convincing. I don't need more convincing. The same God who made a way is the same God who's here today. Even in my darkest moment, this will be the truth I'm holding. The same God who made a way.
messages that I've ever heard came from my dad and it was titled I'm still here won't ever forget it just it's one of them that's embedded in my heart and I, I always thought is there going to be another one any anywhere near it today brother Ronnie it seemed like part two not only am I still here but we're all still here amen God just came to tell me today it, as soon as you think you got it figured it out I'm going to take it to another level. Right. Amen. What a powerful word. And, and, and I never really read it. That, that story, it's like every time you read something, more comes out to you. In the middle of Dad preaching to it, it's like it, I wasn't here for a men's meeting this morning. And I, I leaned over and said something to Brother Christian, and he said, that's where he's going with this. But it's like I, the Lord, it, you feel what that story is about the everybody's still here I never thought about that you know they could have left when he said that the, the, the doors were open and everything them other prisoners could have left the, the baddest of the bad brother Terrence the ones that was you know every day they were sitting in there thinking you know I, I can do this when I get out some of them probably going to do some more bad but they was all still there hey, amen that, that's just powerful to me Amen. I'm going to go through some announcements real quick, too. There will be no youth prayer this Monday night. Also, no recovery or church Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday this week. We will resume our normal schedule next Sunday. So be here next Sunday. Um, church cleaning this week is team number 11. That's Sister Judy and Sister Sheila. Christmas parade is also Saturday, December the 9th at 5 p.m., Please let Sister Amanda know if you want to participate. Um, there's going to be a short meeting after church today, so if you want to be a part of that, um, I guess come up here to, and find Sister Amanda after church. Um, Riverbend Kids, ages 3 to 11. There's a Polar Express party Sunday, December 10th from 4 to 6.30 p.m. in the Family Center over here. Um, there's going to be a movie, hot chocolate, decorating, Christmas cookies, and that's going to be a good time. And to... To come to that and register, text POLAR to the church number, 833-883-9311. So the same number that we put up there for giving, text POLAR to that. We are also having a socks and underwear drive for the Eagle Closet. So please purchase new socks and or underwear, girls and boys all ages, and bring them to the church by Sunday, December the 17th. 
And a reminder about the silent auction on Facebook for the guided hunting and fishing trips from Brother Billy. You can either bid online or use the sheet in the back of the church. Um, bidding ends December the 10th. So it's going to be Sunday, December the 10th that that bidding is going to end. And all of the money and proceeds goes to Aaron Pays. Amen. We've got a lot happening at church. Seems like them announcements get longer, but it's because we got so much going on. Amen. Amen. We got any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Terrence, ain't you gonna come up here and sing to her? Y'all go ahead, let's sing happy birthday to him real quick, and then Brother Walter's going to... Is that your birthday? We'll sing happy birthday to them, and then we're going to sing to Brother Walter. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday. Let's sing to you. A happy anniversary to you. A happy anniversary to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy anniversary to you. A happy anniversary to you. And the best one you've ever had. Amen. We all stand. Brother David, will you dismiss us in prayer this morning?